Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. And today's game up on the tabletop is a small game called Shadow House Masquerade by Blue Orange Games. This plays three to eight players, takes about 15 minutes to play, and is for ages eight and up. And in the game Shadow House Masquerade, the Viscount has been murdered, and you among the guests, as well as the sheriff and the detective, are searching for the murderer. There might be accomplices that are working together with the murderer as well, and so you are going to be playing to complete your objective. If you are the murderer, your objective is to hide among the crowd and escape in time. If you're playing as the sheriff, you're gonna try and cuff the murderer or the detective, find the murderer. And the accomplice, you're gonna try and help the murderer escape. And so there's a wide variety of different roles you can play. And even there's a role where you actually have no role whatsoever, in which case you are just simply trying to help solve the murder. Uh, the game is going to involve you drawing a number of cards from this deck here that is pre-set up, depending on the number of players playing. And then you're gonna be using those cards one at a time, going around in a clockwise order until all cards have been played or an ending has been found, um, in which case like the detective finds the culprit. Uh, the game is over when either all the cards run out or that happens, and then you can go ahead and start another round. You play with points, and the players with the most points at the end of any number of rounds will be the winner of the game Shadow House Masquerade. Let's talk about how to set the game up, how to play, and of course, my review. To begin setup for the game Shadow House Masquerade, the first thing you do is determine the number of players playing the game. And based on the rules, it will tell you what cards you're going to be utilizing to play that specific game. You'll also take all of the tokens, one, two, and three pointers, and this little handcuff marker and place it within reach of all players. For a six player game, which is what I basically set up here for the deck, I'm going to go ahead and put the first on the scene card in, a culprit, two detectives, two accomplices, a sheriff, and two alibis. These are always going to go in a game for six players, and then you're also going to take a number of random other cards, in this case here it's going to be 15, and you'll shuffle them together with the cards that I named. So there are specific cards that must be in this deck, and then cards that can be in this deck. Once the deck has been shuffled up nice and well, then you're going to go ahead and deal out these cards to all the players playing the game. So there should be no cards remaining in this deck. And so in this case, it's a six player game. So simply place out four cards for every player up until the deck is empty. Then you're ready to begin the game. Each player is going to have a hand of four cards and the player who has the first on the scene card is the player who begins by placing a card down and starting the round. Okay, so like I said, the first thing you'll do is have the player who is the first on the scene take and place that card in front of him or herself, and that will begin the round. That means that that player is the starting player, and they have played that card. The first on the scene just simply says that you're the first player, and you play the card at the beginning of the round. Viscount Shadow has been murdered. In which case, the next player in turn order is going to take their hand of cards and play one of their cards face up in front of him or herself. Uh, maybe they'll play the card Witness, which says that you can secretly look at the hand of a player of your choice, and if they are the culprit or ha have an accomplice card, then you can swap at least one card from them, kind of giving information to the rest of the table. The next player might play something like, oh, I don't know, an alibi. Uh, now, alibis, typically you want to utilize them when you are the culprit so that you can answer a detective with, I am not the culprit. But you can also just simply play these cards here. There's never going to be a reason why you cannot play cards. And this one here says that if you're holding an alibi card, you must answer a detective with, no, I'm not the culprit. There's no effect when you place this card in front of you. And in fact, you will have to play them eventually. Maybe you only play this card to save a card, right? Uh, you can also play a card that's the accomplice. That explains what character you might be. Uh, playing this card makes you an accomplice to the culprit. culprit. Uh, ask a player of your choice to discard one of their cards face up. Uh, they must draw a new one. And whenever a player draws a new card, they'll draw it from the deck of remaining cards that you didn't utilize in the game. And so on and so forth. They'll just keep playing cards like the, fam the baby of the family. The other players must follow these three instructions in order. Everyone closes their eyes, only the culprit opens their eyes, and, um, and everyone opens their eyes again so that you can kind of see what, who the culprit is, but nobody else gets to see. So giving yourself more information. And play just proceeds like this in a clockwise fashion as players play out cards. Somebody plays the detective, asks the player of their choice, are you the culprit? And the player uh, is the culprit and is not holding an alibi card, you win the game. So one way to win. In fact, there are multiple ways to win the game. And in the rules, it explains it fairly well. The first one is if you're the detective and you actually identify the culprit, you will score two points. Um, and each other player who's not a culprit or an accomplice 
um, or at least it has an accomplice card in front of them. So any, the culprit is always the culprit if the card is in your hand or in front of them. An accomplice is simply only an accomplice if they played that card in front of them. They would not get any points, but everybody else would get one point. Or if Toby is successful, then Toby will score three points, and every other player um, without a culprit or accomplice card in front of them scores a point. So in this case, the culprit is not the culprit. Um, I mean, really, they're always going to be even with Toby, I suppose, but Toby the dog can actually win the game. A uh, player plays the last card in their hand in front of them and is the culprit, then they are the winner and their accomplice will get points as well, two points. And then finally, if the sheriff is able to handcuff the culprit, then they will score two points and each player is not playing as a culprit or the accomplices will score points as well. And so that is how the game goes, just simply choosing a card from your hand, playing it in front of you, doing what the card says, and passing until a win condition has been met, or if the culprit manages to play their last card, which is gonna be that culprit card, and successfully win the round. You can play this as a one shot, just play this simply once, and that is the game. Whoever, uh, doesn't, whoever has the most points is tied for win. Otherwise, you simply play as many rounds as you would like. It's a simple, straightforward, um, trader role dedu deduction or detection type of game, uh, played in the manner of players choosing roles as they play cards down. Nah, that's the game, Shadow House Masquerade. Let's talk about it. So this is a game uh, about roles, and the roles that you are going to have are going to be based on the cards in your hand. You could have the culprit and the detective, as well as Toby, all in your hand, and when you choose to play those cards determines uh, what role you're going to be playing at that moment. You could be the t detective, uh, but also the culprit, so you pretend like you're searching for the culprit at the beginning of the game, and so you play that card early, as opposed to playing the detective last when you gain as much information as possible. Um, or you could be playing as the culprit, in which case you want to hold that card deeply in your hand and wait until that last card pops out. The accomplices have a choice to either play as an accomplice or simply hold those cards and pass them along because there are a lot of cards in the game that you can pass and switch and trade cards. And so you can also kind of like change your role. Maybe you see that somebody else is the culprit and the game's coming to an end. You might have a card in your hand that lets you steal a card from their hand. Thusly, you become the new culprit. So this not only has a kind of role reverse aspect to it, but it also has kind of the option to uh, steal cards, trade cards, swap cards, and then playing cards to determine what role you're going to be playing as. There are a large variety of cards in the game, and they're all explained in the rulebook. In fact, you have this whole back section of the rulebook that kind of gives you a little detailed summary of every single role in the game, as well as all the cards that are basically considered action cards. Um, but other than the detective or the witness, you have like the housekeeper. Uh, Toby and the sheriff cannot choose you until your next turn. You have rumor cards that you swap things around, or you're the servant. The detective cannot question you until your next turn. Uh, you can share by swapping cards as well. There's alibis to protect the culprit. Uh, more swap, more shares. You're also going to have the accomplice. You'll have the Toby card. Uh, the baby of the family, which kind of gives you some information. And the witness cards, which also give you information. The first on the scene, which always has you starting first. There's the culprit card. This is the one that determines that you're the dastardly villain of the game, and so on and so forth. It's a small deck of cards, and you're just utilizing these little tokens here as points, other than, of course, the sheriff handcuffs, which if the sheriff handcuffs you and you're the culprit, you're out. It's a light game. It's a simple game. It plays kind of like resistance, but like as a singular round quickly and roll swapping. Uh, I enjoyed this game. This is a lot of fun. Now, I only would want to play Shadow House Masquerade with at least six players. More players for this type of game is always better. It lets you kind of hide yourself as the culprit. There are more cards that get played in a given round. More ways to swap your uh, class as well as like be able to utilize the cards in your hand as best as possible. Cards that might seem useless for a game with like three or four players start becoming very, very viable in a game with five, six, and seven players, definitely. And so larger player counts are better. It's very, very light. The game is very simple. If you're looking for a heavy deduction style game with a lot of thinking, this is not gonna be it for you. This is definitely one of those games that is easy to teach, simple to play, gets people involved, and gives you a little taste of deduction all in a night. It's a filler game. Uh, this one here says it plays in about 15 minutes. That's probably right at maybe six to eight players. If you're playing less players, it goes a lot quicker. There's simply only a few things you can do in the, on a turn. You have four cards, you play a card and you pass after you do what the card says. And up until you play all your cards and then you're out. And hopefully if that's the case, you're the culprit and you win the game. The rolls are fun. 
The artwork is stylish, looks good. Uh, each of the cards feels unique, but also differentiates, differentiates them by color, so you can see the difference between them. And each of the cards explains itself very well. You understand what the card does when you play it. You don't have to go scouring through the rulebook every time you play a card because you forgot or can't remember what the card does, or you need like a specific Oh, what does it do when this and this and this specifically happens? It's very rare that that ever happens. You know what the cards do when they do it. Looking for a light deduction game with a trader, with role swapping, and something that can be played with pretty much everybody as a gateway game. This is definitely the starter one to select. It's a lot of fun. I'll keep this around for quite some time because it's a game I can show people before we get into the more heavier things like uh, going from this to Resistance and Secret Hitler to something like Oh, I don't know, uh, Specter Ops or uh, uh, Theory of Dracula. Those ones are really, really meaty. So if you're looking for a light one, Shadow House is the one to look at. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Shadow House Masquerade by Blue Orange Games. If you're interested in picking up this title, there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and purchase this. And of course, if you'd like, you can hit that subscribe button, bell notification button, so you can see more videos. We come out videos about three times a week and I have a Sunday live stream where we stream games just like this one here. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to dancing around in the masquerade with you next time.